Mike Hadries, aka Perfume Genius, is one of the most consistent artists working today. He's four for four so far. He makes some really gorgeous art pop, slash a bunch of other genres that he has worked into his music over the years. His last album, No Shape, is one of the most magical and whimsical albums that I heard all last decade. The songs Slip Away and Reef are just two of the best songs I've ever heard. It was one of my favorite albums the year it dropped, so naturally I am very excited to get into this new album here called Set My Heart on Fire Immediately. Wow, that is a hell of a title. The single for this thing, I think it was described, found him going in a shoegaze direction, which was very interesting to hear. Had this warm ambient-ish outro that I also really liked, but overall when I heard it, I was like, oh, it sounds like we might get a completely new direction from him on this new one. I don't know if that's the case, obviously, because I haven't heard it yet, but we're gonna jump right into it now, starting off at track one, which is called whole life. Half of my whole life is gone. That is a heavy way to open the album up. I'm 15 seconds in and what I hear him vulnerably saying, half of my whole life is already gone. If that doesn't set the tone for an album, I don't know what does. is hitting my soul. It was just... You guys might see me cry on camera in this video. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna say that now. <laughs> the way he slid that faint gorgeous piano line in, then hit us with these swinging strings, and now he's peppering in these little synth hits that don't feel like they would work as well with the naturalistic instrumental. I guess just on paper, but now that I'm hearing it, it's working so damn well, and oh my god, this is beautiful. This is how you open an album. This, this could be something really special. was stunning on every front. His vocals, his lyrics, the instrumental, the way it moved from start to finish. I just feel like I'm in for a treat now. I, I needed an album like this in my life that appeals to my romantic side and yeah, it's hitting hard. Now we're heading into Describe, which again I already have heard, but of course I'm gonna let it play. If there's one thing you should know about me is I am just a sucker for those fuzzy ass reverb shoegazy type guitars. Loveless is one of my favorite albums of all time and anything like this that reminds me of it, immediately I love it. Especially when you're getting vocals and melodies this great on top of it. The whole song has a really rich, thick sound. affirming way to end the song. The rumbling undertone mixed with the flood of light and these just serene sounds coating the top of it. It's gorgeous. Next we have track three which is called Without You. Sorry for my lack of comments throughout that track. Uh, the upbeat instrumental was really memorable and a distinct change of pace from the first two tracks, but I just kind of got lost in that one a bit because lyrically, that was really powerful to me and hit home maybe a bit too much. I don't really open up about this ever and I think I've only told like 
one or two people in my life who I'm super close to this ever, but I've definitely struggled with some self-image and body dysmorphia issues, especially when I was younger. And this song is tackling kind of what that feels like, but it's in a little more of an optimistic light because it finds Mike in a moment where he finally, for a brief moment, feels almost good, as he says, while looking at himself in the mirror. And lyrics on here, like it's a blurry shape, it's a jumbled tape, just enough to find the trace, it's enough in the mirror, I can almost find your face. It just moved me a lot because it really is a unique and weird sensation to look at yourself in the mirror and you look different pretty much every second that you're staring at yourself. So saying I can almost find your face, I don't know, it just resonates with me a lot. Maybe I'm getting too personal here, but I just want to let you guys know why that affected me so much. So yeah, that was a really powerful one for me and now I'm on to track four, which is called Jason. Jason, I'm just me. He is hitting some high notes there. Lying on his this, this man has range. That harpsichord and bass line are playing off each other in a really cute and lovely manner. I'm gonna be honest, my camera stopped recording because its storage was full and I didn't realize until now, so I've already listened to tracks five, six, and seven. I'm not gonna fake re-reacting to them, so I'll just give you my individual thoughts on each one. Leave was incredibly interesting, a very uniquely composed track. You had an instrumental that was composed mainly of these very dreamy harps and strings. On its own, it would have just been very magical and serene, but Mike came through on it with this really strange, lo-fi, breathy, almost non-melodic delivery that was actually pretty creepy. There were points in the song where you just heard him breathing nothing else there were also these animal howls in the background throughout so the contrast the juxtaposition of that purely lovely instrumental with the rest of the things he was adding on to the song made for a very distinct tone it makes me think of the film midsummer which is also you know very beautiful and creepy and weird and makes you uncomfortable and is unsettling at the same time and the way it manages to blend both of those sensations without canceling them out is just very impressive and cool to me on the floor was one of the most straightforward and catchy tracks so far it's one that i can see becoming an anthem of mine if i played enough I was already singing along to the chorus by the end of the track. It was very upbeat. There was some bluesy guitars on it. The instrumental moved very gracefully. It felt like it was skipping along. There's also a really cool part on this song where pretty much the entire instrumental peels away and we just get Mike singing over this very pretty ambient soundscape that just totally envelops him until the rest of the track kind of floods back in. And then on Your Body Changes Everything, he came in with a vocal pitch that was noticeably lower than any of the others that he's used on the project so far. There were also quite a few lines where he added this warbly tone to his voice. So just hearing that and then thinking back to songs like Leave and Jason where he is also doing completely different things with his voice just makes me appreciate how versatile of a performer he is. And I also really like the lyrical sentiment of your body changes everything pretty much espousing that when the person he loves is near him when their bodies are together, it's almost like he's stepped into a new reality, everything has changed. That's an especially profound feeling for someone like Mike and myself honestly who deal with a lot of mental health struggles. So when there's someone so special to you who when you're with them, they just make all the noise and messiness and claustrophobia in your head just fade away and you can actually just be at peace for a moment while you're with them. You're just in a whole new reality, one that you actually love being in. So that's my little catch up there. It is a shame that I lost the footage, but you know what? Live and let live. I'm over it already. Can't let something bother me that's out of my control. So now we're on to track eight, which is called Moonbend. <laughs> I love how he takes his time to open a song to invite you into the mood before really layering on too much and just overloading you with some of the more euphoric and over the top instrumental moments that he can have. white noise at the back of this song. Sometimes with sparse music like this, when they don't add something like that to underscore the whole song, it just makes it feel very hollow. But with that white noise permeating everything, it allows you to stay locked into the headspace while he just uses the sparseness to create this very creeping feel. And we can hear now that he's about to go into something a bit more layered and stimulating. It hasn't built quite like I expected. Like it's not just ramping up the whole time, but there are these slight bursts where he might just layer his vocals a ton or let the synth chords flourish a bit more. So it's maintaining this very patient, suspenseful tone, and I think it's doing a very masterful job at it, and it's also very fitting for the lyrics on this song, which are a bit creepy at times, like when he says, carving his lung, ribs fold like fabric, or cast him in violet, curtain close my eyes, take his light from mine. <laughs> acoustics that have been brought in are so warm. I just keep thinking of that one scene in Moonlight where they're on the beach at night together.
call this man Hitchcock because on here he is the master of suspense. Yeah, that was a really carefully and particularly constructed song and he just had such a fine touch and delivered it with such grace and poise. I was really feeling that one. Might be one of my favorite tracks so far. Going in now to track nine, which is called Just a Touch. see me do much reacting there because that was by far the flattest track so far and honestly I'm not really caring for that one on first listen. The song was very light, very delicate, but it didn't use that in a way that was very effective in my opinion. It just felt kind of plain. The song didn't really progress much. It does sound pretty. It keeps up the beautiful feel that the album has going for it, but it doesn't add anything to it. I don't know. That one just didn't really do anything that interested me. Even lyrically, it was pretty tame stuff. Nothing I find particularly great. So I guess I'll just write that one off for now and swing right into track 10 which is called nothing at all we're already starting off with a lot more energy than the last track i like those little it feels like there's so much energy bubbling beneath this song. It feels like a lot of passion and emotion is just being pushed down, but it's trying to break free, so I wouldn't be surprised if the chorus just kind of unleashes all of that. I don't know what I'm hearing right now, but that sounds gorgeous. This is the moment of release I was kind of waiting for the entire time. But the whole build was great. The flutes that came in, those really gorgeous synths, there were a lot of elements to this song that carried it until this point. And now this is just the final release of emotion. A great way to close the song. Really colorful and extremely passionate track. Track 11 is called One More Try. that little echoey, warping sound that this guitar has. It's, it's very spellbinding. I feel like I'm being cast into a trance. It's back with the 6-8 swing. Okay, you just can't leave it alone, can you, Mike? These drums are so dusty and blend with the rest of the very lovely sound. In a nice naturalistic way, it gives the track a slightly more raw feel while still being very sweeping and romantic. I feel bad for not addressing the lyrical content more, but on tracks like these, there's not much to it. There's literally only eight or so lines on this track, plus a two-line chorus. And his writing is often very esoteric, you know, my remembering, not what it used to be, my dream fell in hazy sheets. I personally would decipher that as, you know, my remembering, not what it used to be. He feels like his memories are starting to fade. He's really starting to feel old. That to me kind of ties back to what he was talking about on the first track. And then when I look at a line like, my dream fell in hazy sheets, like I could come up with with some interpretation for that if I really tried, but it really is super open-ended. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think the very esoteric and more mysterious feeling lyrics on tracks like these just add to the overall mystical and magical and dreamlike aura that the album has. So I do think the lyrics are adding to the album in a very nice way. And there are tracks like Without You or Jason or Your Body Changes Everything where the sentiment of the song is very clear and adds a lot to the track. But even the lyrics with tracks that are a bit unclear, they're very poetically written. It allows Mike to be vulnerable while still maintaining a veneer of mystery and lets him remain a more shadowy figure than just someone who you know everything about them you can see right into their head. Two more tracks left. The second to last one is called Some Dream. Coming in with those high, high soaring vocals once again. It's always an ear grabbing way to start his songs. This passage here is kind of exactly what I'm talking about so far. I would have to sit down and just look at this, breaking it down line by line, maybe looking at other people's interpretations, you know, even to piece together what he's actually concretely talking about here. But I don't necessarily want him to just be talking very straightforwardly and very concrete. I like this strangely descriptive language and these vivid scenarios that he's painting that I'm sure have a very deep metaphorical meaning that's very personal to him. But yeah, I've even just been staring at this for multiple minutes now and I just, I don't know what 
to really make of it. But that slight confusion adds to the sort of haunting vibe that the song has so far, so in that sense the lyrics do work. This is very specific poetic language that again just adds a lot of romance to his music. <laughs> That switched up big time. I love those fuzzly textured guitars once again. This track seamlessly went from the really haunting, sparse opening to this really thick, rich, heavy, fuzzy sound in the middle that was a lot more revving and had a lot more punch behind it. And then it calmed out here to the end to this really gorgeous string-led outro and each part transitioned to the next so fluidly, really great three-act structured song here. And now to close this thing out, we have Borrowed Light. Really dreamy keyboard notes there. <laughs> kind of reminds me of Peach Dream by Lucky. That's a really weird ass comparison to make to a fucking perfume genius song. What the hell? No closer. I love the slight rumble that carried throughout the entire song. The really creamy keys as I was talking about earlier, those sprawling strings at the end. Didn't do too much that I haven't already heard on this album, but it continues to be gorgeous. It continues to do this sound really well. So yeah, damn, that ended up being one of the most beautiful things I've heard this year so far. I feel like that shouldn't surprise me because I feel like I could say that after listening to any of his albums in the year they came out. It distinctly feels like a perfume genius album. He didn't do anything too crazy or wild or different with his sound, but he's bringing a lot of new cool elements to it to keep it fresh, to make sure it doesn't just feel like he's dropping the same album over and over again. I also think there would be no problem using this as a starting point for his music, because if all you're looking for is some elegantly composed, masterfully crafted, euphorically beautiful songs with really vulnerable and impassioned vocal performances, some great lyrical content at times, some more esoteric stuff too, like I was talking about, it all comes together to form a glowing ball of light that just enters my soul when I hear any of these songs. Didn't care for just a touch, but I liked everything else on here. Loved a good bit of it as well. Really, it's just another great release from him. 99% chance it's gonna make my year-end list unless a shit ton of amazing stuff comes out the rest of the year. So yeah, I'm walking away from this one with a very, very positive outlook. Loving it a lot, and I hope you guys are too. Let me know your thoughts on it, and other than that, thank you guys as always for watching, and I'll see you next time.